Hi, everyone. We are on joy workout number 92. Woo woo, 92. And today's topic is turn up the heat. So as you know, I've been thinking a lot about unnumbing the heart and resurrecting joy. Oh, I still love that phrase as much as the first day I met it from Angus Fletcher, author of Wonderworks. And I want you to think about our, um, uh, what you might call it, our feelings letter. And up until this point, everything I've been focusing on is like, let yourself feel, let yourself feel, let you, whatever you're feeling, let yourself feel it. If you are in a steady enough place, what I want you to do is I want you to turn up the heat now. I want you to take gratitude and raise the volume as high as it can go. I want you to take joy, raise the volume as high as it can go. And also in the opposite direction. So I'll tell you a story about that. So a couple of days ago when I was feeling in a funk, I shared that with you, right? And then the next day I was like, okay, I got this. I'm getting a handle on this. And then, then it got even better when I shared the experience that had like really just triggered me. Just kind of, whoa tsunami there that I didn't even realize. I was like, I'm fine. I'm fine. <laughs> ouch, 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 ouch. And, uh, and I said, if I'm going to give you this story, but I'm going to give it to you in the form of a story from a movie so that I don't have to betray confidences or anything like that. Okay. So in the movie Dead Poet Society, which I watched like three or four times in the movie theater the first week it came out, and the second, third, and fourth times I came with a notepad for all the quotes in it. And um, I think that was the year I started my very first quote journal. Okay, now we have the JBL Village, building block village full of great quotes. Um, so anyway, this boy, uh, teenage boy in a very fancy boarding school um, was sent a birthday gift from his mother for the second year in a row. Uh, that was the same gift that she sent the previous year. And it was a gift of a, uh, a desk set, you know, like a, just a rectangle piece of leather or whatever with a pencil holder and whatever else comes in a desk set. And it was wrapped up in like cellophane or whatever. And you could see the kid had got, he was like numb. Like he wasn't crying. He was like a teenage boy, but he was definitely upset. And he was definitely numb. I really want to rewatch the movie now to get to the uh, heart of the emotions in the movie. But anyway, his roommate was very much coming alive to his own joy. And his roommate saw that he was, that his, that, that, that the kid who got the present was like, upset. So he said, let's go take care of this right now. And he, he, he walked him over to um, a small walking bridge. Um, I guess they have a pond or a lake or whatever at their school. And they stood in the middle of the bridge together. And he encouraged the kid to just fling it out, just fling it into the water, just get rid of the darn thing. And you could see that the kid who had, you know, was getting rid of the gift was like, oh my God, you could see his catharsis. Like he was like, thank you. I mean, think about this kid's situation. Who's he going to complain to? Who do you go to when you're really rich and you've just been given a birthday gift and it's the same, what's the word? Abandonment. It feels like abandonment. It almost feels like a betrayal. Um, like you're nothing. I didn't even put thought into this is what it feels like. But who do you go to to complain about that? Um, who's going to validate you? Who's going to validate your pain? That's the, that's the, that's the question. So, so, um, <laughs> so a lot of the story was about this kid who was numb becoming unnumb. He was learning how to unnumb. And Robin Williams was the teacher helping the whole class of kids to unnumb and resurrect their joy. Carpe diem. So a similar situation happened to me. And when I talked to one friend about it, you know, she was like, you know, it's really good just to be kind and not be angry. And all that was proper, appropriate, and good. And it felt good to just be able to talk about what was going on in my world, in my experience. Um, 
but I found myself like emotionally behaving like I was in a too tight of a dress, is uncomfortable. Um, and I, it, it made me shrink more. And so then yesterday when I was feeling better, I had come, I had started to come out of it, you know, um, then I was with, um, uh, with a friend of mine and are we still filming? I think we are. I think flip it on the screen anyway. And she said, and I said to her, if this experience had happened to you, if you were in my shoes, what would you feel? And you know what she said? She said, I would feel incredulous. And I was like, yes. And so what I had done habitually was I went into like in the, the previous to her saying that I was going either into sadness or into spirituality, like, oh, just see the best in the other person. They're doing their best, blah, blah, blah. And I, I was just feeling worse for it. I was feeling more numb for it. Um, and so when she said, I would, I, I, that's incredulous. I was like, yes. And I let myself feel incredulous fully. And I felt validated on that level uh, because we're not supposed to feel incredulous about other people's kind deeds. We're supposed to be appreciative and, 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 oh, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Fake, uh, you know, like, what do you want from me? You want me to be fake? I don't want to be fake. So then it was putting me like in a double bind about that. So when she said incredulous, I was like, okay, next time this kind of thing comes around, I'm calling you and we are going to like, I don't know, do something to unknown because uh, she makes me laugh. And so, and I make her laugh. And so it's good. And then part of the conversation, she started talking about a situation in her life that was like upsetting to her uh, over the last couple of weeks, it was just kind of niggling in her brain. And she's like, I know we were just talking about you. I don't mean to switch. And I was like, no, no, keep talking, keep talking. Um, Cause it was, I was watching her walk through and it was giving me insight into my own experience because we were sharing from an authentic place of uh, being vulnerable and being honest and being willing to feel our own feelings. And so we were giving each other the gift of acknowledgement and space. It was neither of us was like pulling to get the energy from from the other or from the room from the experience. So what what I want you to do if you're feeling in in a stable enough place because if your car is like kind of wonky and unstable, you don't want to go faster. So this 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 joy workout is is for you to be aware of if you're if you're uh, driving on a on a shaky car right now, just be aware of it that you're going to want to turn up the heat to all the feelings. Because as soon as I let the incredulousness come through, it came through and out, and I was free from it. It's the freedom. It's the liberation. That's what you turn the heat up for. Because once you feel it, now you're not resisting it. Once you're not resisting it, you don't have to hold on to it anymore. Oh, it's freedom. So I want that freedom for you, but I don't want you to jump there. If you're already shaky, what you need to do first is gently face the feelings, whatever it is you might be feeling and like touch into it the way, like maybe a kid would touch into water, um, you know, like in a lake or something like that. Maybe they're a little bit afraid. My, my dog, I learned later on, uh, he was a hundred pound Pyrenees. He was 140 pounds at his biggest, um, uh, big white dog. Um, whenever he would be near like a puddle or a stream or something, he would walk through like really dainty. Like normally he was like, he was very friendly. He looked like a big teddy bear. Don't mess with mama because he would definitely kick your butt if you tried to. But he just had like this very like sweet, benign, easygoing quality to him. Like kids could trample on top of him and he would just sit there like, okay, when are they going to be done? You know, and he'd just sit there. And But when it came to water... It was shocking how dainty he was when he would walk through it. And then I discovered later on that dogs from his breed live high up in the mountains and they risk hypothermia if they get uh, water on them in the middle of a freezing minus below zero winter, um, they could die. So uh, that was kind of funny. Why? How did I get there? Hiro Nakamura. Oh, he brought me to fuller senses of feelings for sure. Anyway, I'll leave it to you to figure out how I got there because there was there was a good a good reason for that. But I don't remember what it is right now. So, joy workout. Feel as 
fully, as fully, as fully as you can. Oh yeah, tread gently. If, if you're afraid of the water, if you're afraid of a certain feeling, let's say it's powerlessness or sadness or, or joy itself, if you're afraid of it, just go gently and, and trust that in the future you will increase your ability to feel whatever it is because you are the sky. You can let in whatever wants to come through and, and let it fly through. So there we have it. And I appreciate you so much for being here with me, growing together on this joy-based living journey. And I will see you tomorrow for joy workout number 93. Bye for now.